Well, like the lyrics in the song go, dreams do come true. And today, she needs no introduction, but I'm, I'm darn sure going to give her one. She is an icon in the sitcom genre of comedy. She is a television legend. She is a pioneer in women's physical comedy, an author, a, direct, a producer, a legend, but also one of my fondest memories ever. Shirley Feeney, Miss Cindy Williams, thank you for being here today. I go on with you, Kevin. That's um, quite an introduction. Who's here? Well, I, 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 I have been waiting 30 years to do that interview. Oh, so, oh. I mean, my whole life has been nothing but happy days and Laverne and Shirley. Oh, my goodness. You've got to get out more. At, well, no. I mean, I got to Tulsa, Oklahoma to come see you. And I learned, I met a whole bunch of new friends in Tulsa. I learned about the Outsiders Museum, the house that they shot the movie at. And I can't wait to see you again. Uh, or not again. We didn't see each other yet. But I can't wait to see you in March of 23 when we come out, come out there and see you again. Or come and see you. I'm thinking about coming to your um, upcoming show in Kentucky. I think you're in Kentucky soon. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, well, next we go to New Mexico, though. We're going to oh. be in New Mexico and Taos and Santa Fe on uh, July 23rd, I believe. Awesome. Awesome. I, yeah, I'm going to make sure that we post all of the information, which we have been anyway, uh, on the Facebook page. I want to tell you, uh, we'll recap real quick. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, no problem. Absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll recap real quick. I started a Facebook page after revisiting Laverne and Shirley on Pluto TV. And I thought to myself, wow, a whole new generation is getting to see the show that I grew up on. So I thought maybe I'd get 100 likes, you know, maybe, and we see how it goes. So I kind of made a five-part series where I talked about the show um, and all the wild stuff about the show, what I loved about it, basically. Um, and what happened was we got almost, we are about 40 away from 7,500 followers. Um, wow. It's been nothing but positive. It's been nothing but fun. And, and it's become a thing of its own only because people connect with the show. It, it, I've learned really quick. It's, it wasn't about me. The YouTube channel doesn't get the hits, but the Facebook channel does. And, and I love that. And I have, a, I have a unique style of interviewing. I, I, if I ever had 15 minutes with one of my favorite legends of all time in a hotel a lobby or an airport, what would I ask him? So that's what I'm going to try to do here today. And uh, we had the distinct pleasure a couple of weeks ago to talk to Henry Winkler. He sends his regards. And right back I, at it. <laughs> yeah, and I did, a ma I did a magic trick for Henry, so I'm going to do something special for you today. Oh, I love magic. Awesome. So I got something special for you at the end, okay? Um, okay. But we're, we're going to start right in the beginning. Like, when did you know? Like, how old were you when you knew you wanted to be in show business? Well, in show business, I don't know, but I knew that... I loved um, I loved to mimic when I was young, and I about this in my show. Um, when I saw your show of shows, um, Sid Caesar and Imogene Coca, and I was watching it, it made me laugh out loud. I was about six, maybe five, six, and I thought I can do that. Look at those funny people. Those, I mean, because they were just so miracle and happy and they like I said they made me laugh out loud and I remember thinking at that age I can and you did you started young right you were doing commercials or something when you were really young well then not, not until my you, you have to skip ahead until I was in my 20s when I was 22 I started actually working you know earning a living so to speak in show business right. in show business now, what, what was your favorite show? My, mine was obviously Happy Days in the Virtual. What was your favorite show growing up? Someone just asked me that. I loved uh, Early Hillbillies. Right. That was my when I was uh, younger. But when I was a little kid, I liked, you know, like the Milton Berle show, the Honeymooners, uh, Jackie Gleason, uh, your show of shows with, as I said, Imogene Coca, Sid Caesar, Imogene Coca, and just all those marvelous, marvelous comedy. I just got it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Same thing with me. Um, I, I loved watching anything variety show, anything song and dance. Um, one thing I loved about Laverne and Shirley is you guys, everybody sing and dance. Uh, you know, even the people who couldn't sing and dance. Were singing well, dance. it's so alive. And when, you're, when you watch a show like that or you do a show like that, it just reminds you that you're alive. You know, I mean, everybody's alive together in the room. It's not some, you know, Thing you have to really think about like oh my goodness who murdered him it's just happiness and everybody joins in 
I, uh, I make fun of everybody and Laverne and Shirley on, on the podcast or the sh- because my, nobody ever, anywhere I ever worked, nobody was ever that talented. We never had a talent show and none of my friends can sing and dance. So I was always jealous of you guys because like everybody sang and dance on Laverne and Shirley. Um, so, so Francis Ford Coppola, American Graffiti, that's the first time I think you got discovered, right? Like that was like a big, the, one of the biggest things you've ever done, right? Well, uh, American Graffiti was George Lucas. Oh, I'm sorry. Where did I get Cor- Coppola from? I'm because sorry. I because Francis Coppola produced it, and in the end, Universal loved it. He bought it back, and then he made a whole bunch of money <laughs> because uh, it became one of the highest grossing films of its time. You know, and uh, relatively speaking, one of the highest films ever. Um because it was made for like $775,000 in 28 days. But he knew, he trusted George. He knew that George was that wunderkind and uh, that he had this vision and a beautiful vision came. But the studio initially, did it. they just didn't get it. And so they shelved it and they weren't going to release it. So Francis Coppola bought it back. And um, and then by hook or crook, it, it got released. It was really the underground, not underground music industry, the music industry, because um, um, showing it late at night, you know, started having their own private screenings. They got a hold of, um, you know, of uh, the film and ran it at night. And then it just, it, then it just universal it couldn't fight it anymore so they put it out and then it was lines around the block so that was a graffiti and then also i and that was george lucas that was his first studio film so it's another star wars connection because harrison ford was in that and right. the other star wars connection if a lot of people don't know uh, you almost became princess Leia. am i right well almost but <laughs> in my show i actually show my audition the real audition it is so bad Kevin. it's not even laughable that's how bad it is but i bookend it with these certain things and it makes it it makes it funny i made fun of myself thank goodness i had a chance to do that but you see back at that script audition for the audition for hans solo for even for 2d2 and uh for the voice and um Nobody knew what these technical phrases, you know, uh, were that George was had written. You know, everybody was like, excuse me, but what is an R2-D2? Is it an is or a they? I mean, in there. And so we just went into it blind reading these, you know, when the forces of Nargon oh, and the sub forces of, you know, and all, all that stuff. Wars jargon. Nobody knew what it meant, so it, it really gave a new definition to the term inflection. Nobody knew what meaning or what it was, and I, I talk about that in the show. In my show, I say, uh, if I could have gotten that part, I could have played that part. If only I'd known what an R two D two was, mm. or even a three CPO or CPO, <laughs> whatever. That's why you didn't get it right there. And what the <laughs> heck is Obi Wan Kenobi? Right. I mean, who knew it was going to become like a whole subculture? I mean, Star nobody Wars, knew it. Star Wars Wars not us, and, but when we were doing American Graffiti, we thought we were doing a hot rod movie. Right. But, you know, it's one of the um, it's on the, Amer- uh, the AFI um, movies of all time list. And the and anyway, right. uh, so, yeah, that's showbiz, Kev. Absolutely. Yeah, it's too bad, but it's awesome at the same time. Because, like, you know, like I say, Star Wars is a phenomenon. So even the Star Wars fan are, still love you just because you be that connected. You know, it's, it's even that connected. Um, with, uh, when I talked earlier about the music, we have some beautiful, I've got a couple things here, but. Oh, God. Let's oh, talk about this for a minute. God. Did you get to keep the dress? Please tell me you got to keep the dress. No, oh, we didn't keep the dress. What, what was the story here? Now, I love Penny, you know what I mean? But she's not a great singer. So somebody had a great idea. Um, but so they they were doing. Didn't we talk about his album? Huh? I think Henry made an album there. Oh, too. I, I, I've um, got that. I've got that too. I've got Lenny and Squiggy's album too. Yeah. They, to now they are. They their stuff is so darn funny. I love Wonderful. That. 
Yeah, I love that album. That one actually had the poster. Along with. <laughs> yeah, that one actually had the poster in it, so it was a super good find. Um, yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, one of my favorite things ever uh, is one day I'm hanging out with my best friend, Josh, and he's, we're talking about Airplane and Police Squad and the Naked Gun movies with Leslie Nielsen. And he says, have you ever seen Naked Space? The monster that monster wasn't nice. And I said, no. So he sure. just, the creature wasn't nice. Exactly. See, I messed it up again because I always think Naked Space because Naked Gun because of Leslie. And right. I said, I said, what is that? And he pulled it up and, you know, I tapped out after 40 minutes because it's such an awesome movie. I had to pick it up again the next day. But we've always won. I, I admit it, I saw you on the screen. I was like, oh, my God, it's Shirley Feeney. What she did? How in the world did you get mixed up in that? Well, that's my that one of my dear, dear friends, Bruce, who I went to college with and Kimmel. And he wrote these movies. He wrote uh, the first one he wrote was the first nudie musical. And uh, I was in that. Then, um, yeah, look it up. And then I, uh, then he wrote uh, The Creature Nice, which became Naked Space. And, um, and so we just did these movies and they were so much fun. And it was like we were at school again, having fun playing Neil Simon, you know, and all our, all those wonderful comedies, which we would do in scene work in at in theater arts at Los Angeles City College. So it just sort of traveled on. And he had all our all our friends from the theater arts department were in his movie. Well, you know, so it was just a real a whole bunch of fun and a real blessing to get to do because how many people get to do that with their friends, have a real a real live movie, Kevin. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. do a real live movie. I, and I've never been in one, so I've got nothing to say. So I, to me, to me, I love a great bad movie. You know, uh, Tommy Wiseau's The Room. I love that movie. Uh, so when I watch this one, all I could think of is I think it was filmed in somebody's garage. And uh, the singing guy, the, the, the pizza hut looking monster that ate humans. The also creature, the to, creature. Right. He said he sings show tunes. So he loves the, show tunes. Vicious. It's the greatest. Oh, he's just joking. He's having a little joke. <laughs> he bit your arm off. He's just playing. <laughs> just a little play. Oh, it's so good. So I bet you there's only like you know a handful of people who know what we're talking about, but I'm okay with that. Because me and my job, me and my friend Josh, we still talk about it to this day. And every once in a while, we'll fire it up and watch it. <laughs> well, I'll pass that on to Bruce. He'll be very complimented. <laughs> Absolutely. Tell him we are huge. I am. Humongous fans. If it ever comes out on Blu-ray, you know, I'll buy 10. You know? I think uh, it I think it is. I know he first knew the musical on Blu-ray. Blu Not Blu-ray, but well, maybe that, whatever. It's a they're releasing it, it again. Maybe it's in not Blu-ray. I'm definitely Isn't Blu ray defunct now. Well, I, I don't even know. Yeah. I'm, t I'm old, so I don't know how it works. You know, well, I'm older, so I, I mean, I had to get somebody to set this up. <laughs> That's right. They should have filmed that, us trying to set this up. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about now. Like, now you, uh, you, if you're writing a book, surely I jest. Um, what I, one another, another page I, ru I run is called I Love Your Library. Uh, I, I, my sister was a librarian for years, so I'm always. Oh, wow. Library. So I, I'm, I always send a link out to your book, you know, tell them to buy it. But if you don't can't afford to buy it, you can definitely pick it up in any local library. I've been able to. Oh, uh, yeah. It. It's so, a fun read. I, I, I always say it's like two really great People magazine articles. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it reads like that. I mean, it reads fast, but I got, I got some really good kudos for, uh, and I was very of, of that book, but you know what happened? I was supposed to be writing the book and I got um, cataract surgery and I was supposed to be over it in a day. Well, it, three months later, I shot one line and oh, Lenny, that's my friend, Lynn, played Miss Yvonne on Pee Wee's Playhouse. Um, so uh, both my eyes shut and I had this deadline and three months later, you know, I had eaten up three months until my eyes healed. And so I wrote the book in, I don't know, three months, two months. But I was so happy with it. And I, you know, I wish I'd had longer because I could have put more of my stories in, you know, the things that have, my adventures in show business that um, I've been blessed to have. 
Hey, I mean, you can write another book, you know. Uh, well, yeah. I campaigned for another book, and I'm campaigning for Laverne and Shirley Funko Pop characters because uh, Happy Days has Funko Pop. It's the only right that you guys should be immortalized in Funko Pop as well. Oh, yeah. I love those little creatures, those little, those little dolls. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have the fonts. We talked about it. And her. then they should do a kitty. Absolutely, they should do a boo-boo kitty. Because I'll tell you who buy one is Stevie Nicks, because she was a big boo kitty fan. Really? Hopefully, Liz, I'm sure she is. Yeah. she. I met her one time, and the first thing she said to me is, oh, boo-boo kitty. That's what she said to me. And I was, oh, my God, oh, Nicks. Wow. Yeah, Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I, yeah. I got goosebumps when you said it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she's she's another legend. A legend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Think Sherlock. <laughs> uh sure. So so Cindy, now it's on the road. You're touring, telling your story, me, myself, and Shirley. Uh the, the one in Tulsa got canceled in March, but we but I still went. Um I had a blast out in Tulsa. I can't wait to I'm go. I'm so there. sorry. Oh, don't be yeah. I, made, I made some great friends. I got to visit. I hope the so. I hope you had some awesome when I absolutely did. Um, I can I can tell you where to go. You got to go see the Outsiders Museum. They have all of the um, paraf uh, memorabilia and paraphernalia from the movie. The walls oh, wow. by Rob Lowe and Tom Cruise. Oh, wow, and Francis Dexter. Coppola. <laughs> they got all his stuff. They got his director's chair. They got everything there. Wow. There was, there was a band uh, called House of Pain, and uh, the lead singer Danny O'Connor. He lives in Tulsa. He bought the house and turned it into the the uh, museum and it's spent they got a bed and breakfast now it's so awesome if you're an outsiders fan it's the it's the, the mecca of meccas it's like going to milwaukee it's like going to milwaukee to see the fawn statue in the harbor it's it's the, <laughs> the, the bronze fawns yeah the bronze fawns oh it's so, the oklahoma version of the bronze fawns well i'll keep that in mind when absolutely. I'm, grab an hour grab an hour and pop over there i'm sure they love it they, they'd love it if you were there well, i'm yeah. glad you had fun in oklahoma even oh, yeah. though we didn't get to meet. I'm so sorry. I found the greatest food in the world at this place called Chamara, and I met really nice people this week. So when you do come to Tulsa, they're going to be super, super warm and inviting. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, so yeah. let's talk about your, well, your show. Where are you going to be? And what's your show about? Well, uh, it's one woman, and I don't know with the cast. That's a Renee Taylor. Um, <laughs> It, it, it's just, it's all, it's all my show business stories plus long clips. And, um, you know, like I start off, I start the show off telling the story of when Penny and I first met was, which was at the uh, Coconut Grove in Los Angeles to see, we went to, on a, on a double date. We never met, but we went on a double date uh, to see Liza Minnelli with Little Richard opening for her. Wow. And then we were invited backstage. And I tell this story about how our dates went ahead of us. And to get backstage to Liza Minnelli's dressing room, you had to go Little Richard's dressing room because it was like uh, uh, train compartments, you know, one after. So right. we're shoulder to shoulder. Our dates have gone ahead of us. And we're about to cross through little Richard's dressing room. And I see him sitting down at his dressing room table to my right. And he looks up and he sees Penny and me and he puts his leg across the door and he stops us. And he says, you two, I want to say a blessing over you two. And Penny and I immediately bow our heads. And then he went on and I, uh, anyway, the story goes on from there. And later when he said he, he blessed us with love, peace, happiness, you know, fortune, our heart's desires, you know, everything. It was a beautiful blessing. And then years later, when we were doing Learn and Shirley, we were on the set alone. I see this, we were doing something together. And I see on the writer's table, this variety headline that reads, Vernon Shirley go in L.A. Over, and I said, "Look at this, Laverne and Shirley Gold in L.A. What do you think the reason for our success is?" And without missing a beat, she said, "Little Richard's blessing." And I said, "Exactly." And um, so that's a story I start the show off with. Now you've heard it. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I think I mean that's just a little piece. 
I mean, there's more, there's more to it than that, but awesome. Awesome. Great, great story. Kind of the gist. Yep. Great story. Well, before oh, we go, blessing we, upon blessing upon blessing, my life. I can hear little Richard doing the ooh at the end, you know what I mean? <laughs> he did. I do add a little music to it. He was he was another legend, of course. Um, so oh my God. I, it just you know, tour de force. And um, I guess that got back to him that Penny and I said that because I we said it in other things that little Richard had blessed us. And um, his nephew or his cousin came up to us one time, you know, Richard, you know, heard that and, 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 and they had heard that story. I think I'm, I don't think I'm making that up in my head. I believe, I know he came to a show Penny and I were doing. We you anyway, I digress, I but I love little Richard and Liza Minnelli. Absolutely. Wow. Can wild. you imagine that show? Oh, no. Oh. I mean, that's got to be insane. As soon as you said Liza, I got goosebumps. I love her. It was, I know. It was, amazing. it was, it was just amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Cindy, before I let you go, um, well, I guess it's a new tradition now. I did one for Henry. So yeah. I'm gonna do, I did a card trick for Henry. Um, and it, and it, I think I get more of a kick out of it than anybody else does. But I planned a special magic trick for you today. Um, okay. I, 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 the reason I do magic, obviously, is fun. I love it. I love it. I do magic for a couple of reasons. One, it's fun. It's how I quit smoking cigarettes 20 years ago. Um, and it's something that I teach kids at a magic camp from ages eight to 13. I teach a magic camp every year. Wow. That's fantastic. I can't believe they pay me for it. It's insane. I'll do it for free. They don't even know. Um, but I have more fun uh, teaching kids because it comes back a hundred, a hundredfold and people like magic. You know what I mean? So today with you, I got this box. I've had this box for a long time. You can see it's kind of worn out, but you can see inside hundred percent. Right. If I shake it, there's nothing in there. Okay, right. but you know, if I look in here, there's definitely there's definitely something in here. There's something. Oh my goodness! How did you? It says something. Something. Something's yeah. in there. Something. Yeah, there was definitely something in there. You know, but yeah, but now now don't worry about it. Uh, the not there's nothing. There's, there's definitely nothing in there. Oh oh. And I'll, and I'll show you, I'll show you again. It's it's closed. There's nothing in there. You know, but. Oh wait, there's there's definitely there's definitely more. Oh, it's magic! It's magic! Right. I, I, I'm done. I'm done with the cheap jokes, so we're gonna go with this. When I do see you in Tulsa, I'll bring you some real ones. But oh wow! There's your flowers. Oh, I love that. There's some flowers for you, and obviously, we want to show that we love you. Oh. I want. I just want to say before we go, the most valuable thing in life, I believe, is time. You know, so for you to give your time up for us today, I really do appreciate it. Um, for all the years of, of enjoyment and smiles and fuzzy feelings that you've given it, we've grown to 7,500 followers only because people connect with the show. Because every time they think about it, not even watch it, every time they think about it, it brings a great memory to, to them. Uh, when I think of American Graffiti and now forevermore Naked Space, uh, <laughs> you, you will always be Shirley Feeney to a lot of people. And on behalf of all of my followers and all the people who ever followed the show, thank you. Thank you for your art. Thank you for the physical comedy you guys put yourself through. That was way ahead of its time. People don't understand that. And, uh, I mean, it's still a legacy to this day. So thank you for just not only doing the show and making my dream come true, but thank, thank you, for, you for being there for, for everybody. Thank you, Kevin. It's my blessing, my privilege. And I'm sure Penn say the same thing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you again. Thank you. So thank much. you, Kevin. What fun. And thank you for your time. Really. Thank uh, you. Absolutely. And the magic. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I think that's going to be my new thing. Uh, absolutely. You have to. Yes. You, we need more tricks. Absolutely. So, so I did, with the, I did this with Henry too. Um, I did a card reveal. I asked him to do it in the Fonz character. So if you could say for me, just say, Boo Boo Kitty says your card is the three of clubs. Okay. Boo Boo Kitty says your card is the three of clubs. Perfect. I'm definitely going to use that. Uh, I, I'll, what I do is I make somebody, I'll make the three of clubs, make them pick the three of clubs, and then I'll say, you ever watch Laverne and Shirley? And I'll show you a card with you. And people, uh, people love it. Uh, yeah, Henry did the ace of clubs, I think. But yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I'm gonna, thank I'm you. Gonna, I'm going to stop the recording. Give us any 
chance we'll take it Read us any rule, we'll break it We're gonna make our dreams come true Doing it our way Nothing's gonna turn us back now Straight ahead and on the track now We're gonna make our dreams come true